Welcome to the No Script Show, where uh, I actually don't know what day of the week it is, nor do I care. But yeah, here we go. Uh, how's it going, mate? Ah, uh, dude, I also don't know what day of the week it is. It is so we're we're cool on that. It's whatever you want it to be. Yeah. So uh, yeah, man. What's up? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been. What's this now? Biannual show. It is biannual now. <laughs> That's what I've declared it. It is biannual now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna like branch out now into like gaming vlogs. I'm not even kidding. I am gonna do like more more vlogs when I like do more pixel prattling vlogs because I just like have other stuff to talk about more gaming related. But uh, mm. this will always be something. Um, yeah. So what do you what do you want to talk about first, man? Yeah, dude. We haven't spoken in such a long time that um there's there's quite a fair amount to talk about. Uh, uh, we can stretch it uh, out over multiple episodes. We can just like, release <laughs> a bunch of episodes before the new year. Before the new year, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you, still, you still got a vegetable in charge of, of the country where you are? I don't know what you're talking about, bro. I live in the free state <laughs> of Florida. <laughs> Yo, what's up with the beef between DeSantis if, and um, and Trump? Heavy D is, is, is in charge here. Um, what beef? That's like, weird. It's no. it's not weird. It's actually completely it's completely rational, rational and and explainable. Donald Trump is a man who has never been able to get out of his own way, and he's never been able to not be in the spotlight. So he sees Ron DeSantis rightfully as a rising star in the Republican Party, and as a de facto leader, he needs the spot shine to be the spotlight to be on him. And so he attacks DeSantis. He's even attacked like Youngkin. Uh, he's in Virginia, Glenn Youngkin. He attacked Winsome Sears, the lieutenant governor of Virginia, for some <laughs> fucking reason. It's like, Look, it's I've, the I've dumbest a... attacks ever. But it's it's really explainable once you understand that Donald Trump, again, is a man who does not know how to get out of his own way and shut up. Yeah, but, but I've got a different theory about that. It's it's a it's a false flag operation. Because... If I'm glad one thing, you a f- think that the Republican Party is that competent. No, not not the Republican it. Party, not at all. The Republican Party is about as incompetent as our our governing party. But um, on Trump's side, that what it's a possibility that he realizes that the media absolutely hates him. the The mainstream media despises him with the fury of a thousand suns. Quote unquote. Um, they and they love him, him actually like they wish he was back in prison but if he if he supports someone the media will turn against them immediately but if he if he shows contempt towards a candidate now the media has to decide do they want to side with trump or are they going to go against trump i mean it's a possibility Bold theory. I, <laughs> I still think the dude's ego is just so damn big that he can't stand. But hey, we'll see in like a year and a half's time if you're right. Like possibly, possibly. I'm going to say it's look, possible. I've just decided I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ego. I'm going to go chaotic. Good. OK, so so Trump has got a, he's dissing them to get the media on their sides. And Elon, Elon Musk is not completely as nuts as he seemed to be. That's just the theory I'm going with now. I just sort of hang the sense of it and let's just go with it. See what happens. I still think it's his ego, but I think that your theory is possible. <laughs> yeah. possible. Look, I'm, I'm I don't have a, I don't have a lot of ego. I don't have a lot of lot of confidence in my theory, but it's it's my theory and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'll, I'll wager that is is it's his ego, but yeah, we'll see in like yeah, a year and a but half. I, but time. I but I but I do think it's going to be a. a, a if it's his ego, okay, which is it, let's let's be honest, it probably is. It's going to be an unintended consequence that the media will be less harsh on the candidates that he opposes, just because it's him, and the media do not want to agree with him. Because I don't think there's anything that'll give the guys at CNN a bigger aneurysm than having to agree with Donald Trump on anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, assuming anyone's still watching CNN anymore, because yeah, their ratings are in the toilet. Like their CNN. ratings are in the toilet. It's it's actually. I think actually last I checked, last I checked, Joe Rogan gets like more views than CNN and MSNBC combined. 
I love that Joe Rogan, the guy who's basically <laughs> a modern day barbarian fucking chief. That's who Joe Rogan is. He's like a barbarian chieftain. He's like, you smart man with glasses, explain why sunshine. That's that's who Joe Rogan is. And, it, uh, and I'm not saying that as a riff on Joe Rogan. Yeah, it's not I'm a riff at all. I'm just character like he's the modern day, the modern day barbarian who, chieftain who's like you, smart man. Explain how river flow to me. Like that's oh, who Joe Rogan is. And it's just wow. That's, that that's is the I'm, most on point description of Joe Rogan I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> and, and, he's, and at the end, he's always got to ask, yeah, but have you ever tried DMT? Have you ever tried DMT? <laughs> Oh uh, no, dude. but but yeah, the see the, the mainstream media outlets really are are losing money with um, Joe Biden being in office instead of Trump because at least with Trump they had something to bitch about the whole time. Now now they can't really diss Biden and there's nothing good to say about him, so there's nothing to say at all. They're just like oh. radio silence. <laughs> well, his appeal was that he was essentially a dead guy basically like his like after all the insanity of the last few years everyone mm. was like okay we'll we'll just vote in the dead guy so that he won't do anything but then he made the mistake of taking that large mandate of 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 his win vic of his win margin and thinking oh this means they want me to do historic things no they voted yeah, you to like, do nothing to keep being dead That's yeah what so they voted you for. In, instead what he did is he kicked off cold war 2.0 <sighs> aka the biggest money money laundering scheme in history i mean that is epic that that's that's a hard thing the whole russia ukraine war thing i mean there's a lot of factors to discuss there um but, yeah, but if you just went all, maybe yeah, but i maybe the, but the thing that bothers me is the the Ukraine or Zelensky, I'm not going to say the Ukraine because I don't think think the Ukraine is seeing any of that money that's going pouring into that country. Um, but the U.S. alone has spent more mo- or has dedicated more money to the Ukraine than Russia spends on its military budget annually. That is an insane amount of fucking money. So the and question it, here is, mm. it, it's an insane amount of money. But is it an insane amount of money in the context of the U.S. defense budget? Because as far as I can tell, it's about 10 percent of their entire defense budget. Yeah, OK, but 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 they've got an absurdly large defense budget. Right. So they, my they, question they've is. They've really got a large defense budget. I think they're the country in the world with percentage of GDP with the largest defense defense budgets on the planet. So here's the thing. <sighs> I am I'm a non-interventionist, obviously. I don't like foreign wars. I, I think in foreign entanglements are pretty much always bad. My question in this particular instance is, let's assume everything is, is true. Let's assume it's a money laundering operation. Let's assume that while being a money laundering operation, the Russians genuinely are losing tons of men and material. If I am a Pentagon general, and I'm told all I need to do is spend 10% of my budget to decimate, like what? How much of the Russian fighting force has been decimated? Oh, that's, that's nearly impossible to say, dude. Because I've seen let's, figures. Let's, I've let's seen go figures with a low of, estimate. Low estimates. I think the lowest estimate I've seen was uh, 15,000 casualties, not, not total losses, casualties. Mm-hmm. And in terms of tanks, vessels, all that that they're losing, yeah, that's it's it's actually not it's it's a lot if you think about it. It's a, it's a pretty low intensity war, but it's not an absurd amount. It's not yeah. it's it's low average basically I, for the last. I, I, I it's, tend it's, to let's think put it that this the, way: it's mm-hmm. less than it's less than the U.S. lost in Iraq when they started kicking up the IEDs. I. I tend to think that the actual number of KIA for the Russians is probably a fair bit larger than than the minimum, simply because why would you need to do these mobilizations of your populace if your if your losses weren't that big? Why? 
Yeah, but you see the problem is that I'm not saying that they're on the upper it's a, it's end, the but old, I think it's probably a bit higher than than the minimum because minimum. Yeah, it's somewhere it's somewhere it's, in the middle. It's, it's somewhere in the middle. If it but weren't that is, bad, they wouldn't need to do these mobilizations. But, but the problem is, it's the old old USSR conundrum. Your information that comes out of those countries are exceedingly unreliable. You, you can't really put any stock in, and I feel the same about the Ukraine's figures as well. I mean, it's, it, and Ukraine is corrupt. I mean, you can argue it which way you want to. That's a corrupt government in that country. Everybody knows that. Even CNN said it three years ago. They were harping on about how corrupt Zelensky is. Um, so you can't really believe any numbers or any figures that they put out because you, you can't back it up. There's no... So, but yeah, I think I think I agree with you. That it's somewhere in the middle, somewhere between the lowest. It's somewhere in the midfield, is the actual let's, losses on both let's sides. Say, let's say it's it's just below, like in, from from you know the the bottom twenty fifth percentile guess, which mm. is like the low end guess to like, let's say it's in like the fortieth percentile of yeah. of the actual thing, right? If you are a Pentagon general and somebody said all you have to do is spend 10% of your budget to decimate like 40% to get th- this level of decimate, decimation in the Russians and you won't lose a single man, I, I'm got, I've got to think some of the Pentagon decision makers are saying, hey, maybe this is worth it. Like maybe spending all of this yes, without losing a single man to decimate for, the Russians' military yeah. capability. But the it. problem is, I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying some yeah, of yeah. them are thinking it's worth it. Yeah, but I mean, then okay, it's not working. They're not decimating the Russian capabilities. First off, second off, how long are they going to believe that lie? How, how many how many years is it going to go on that they're going to believe? Oh, we're going to dec- we're going to beat the Russians if we give the Ukrainians more money. It's only going to last that long. Thirdly, if if this is now very hypothetical. If I was a U.S. general, do I really want to decimate Russia? Because Russia is keeping the one half of the Chinese border in check. So if China decides to go rogue, you're going to need Russia to keep them in check because they cover half of the Chinese border or well, well, almost half of the Chinese border. So you don't really want to completely decimate them because that make opens up a massive vacuum for china to just march across the lands like lo- the locusts that they are That's so true. if i was a general i wouldn't want to completely decimate russia firstly and secondly by the time you get to the to the one year mark i would start asking okay how much more money do you guys need to yeah. keep russia at bay because let's face it yeah you know, yes they are mobilizing but they're not fully throwing their full force behind the operation not nearly. They're full force behind. They can go a lot worse. They have gone a lot worse in history. So they're not really giving it their all. And it's just sucking up trillions of dollars to to keep them, what, just to keep them where they are. At some point, you have to start figuring out, okay, is it worth supporting? So you oh, have yeah. to make the choice. No, Are you going to keep on pumping money say, into it? What does, what does they probably have to open back channels with with Putin mm. and be like, okay, with Putin and Zelensky and be like, okay, what does an end to this war look like for, for both of you? Because we can't keep doing this. Yeah. And that that, that raises another big question mark I have over Zelensky is he's been made um, an offer, said let's sit down and talk about a peace agreement. And then he then he just says not not interested. So that that that's kind of suspect. Because yes, yeah, I know you, Russia won't necessarily can't just walk over Ukraine, but uh, I mean, come on. If you look also, at also, don't forget, depending on how the situation gets handled, if the U.S. handles the situation well enough, it could act as a deterrent against China's more aggressive uh, mm. impulses. If they handle the situation well, China has got to be sitting there thinking. Oh wow! Ah, uh, maybe maybe this this but, whole thing won't be as much of a cakewalk as we thought it'll be. Yeah, but but let's be honest, they're not handling it well. Um, <laughs> have, have you seen your Secretary of State? Yeah, dude, there's there's question. It's it's definitely not been handled well. No. The problem is well, that's, it that's depends what, on that's who you ask. It depends on who you ask. Has it been handled well? It really okay, yeah, depends. If you, 
if you ask a person that doesn't have a brain, then yes, they will say it's been handled. Well. I don't know. Defense contractors love the way it's been handled. Oh yes, uh, but the, the defense contractors loved World War One and World War Two as well. <laughs> I mean, that was an absolute payday for them, <laughs> and I doubt that we want to repeat of those two instances at all. But yes, um, yeah. but I mean, let's let's say this. If you think about it this way, America is pumping trillions of dollars into Ukraine. That fight is going on for how many months now? Bordering on a year. Does anyone Almost know like, how much the actual amount that's been spent? Uh, but but thanks to thanks to the way they do the bills in in the states, no one fucking knows what's the actual amount because they must make these bills where are we going to put this bill in front of Congress? But there's 27,000 items on the bill. It, well, it's not just like one the, item. That, like the omnibus bills, like yeah, the omnibus bills, which is complete bullshit. I know, I know that they're in double digits of like yeah, billions. Of the trillions. Right? No, is it not the double digits. Yeah, in the trillions is already. A, yes, they're is in the trillions, trillions already. With isn't a trillion a hundred thousand billion? Wait, how much is yes. it? A trillion because, is a hundred thousand billion. Because I know that they 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 uh. In September, it got to like 60 bill, 80 bill. Are we not dropping a zero, or, or am I missing a zero? Okay, here? okay. Well, 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 let's just let's be let's just keep it simple, okay? Let's let's say it's what conservative. 100 billion. 100 billion. So it's 100. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wait, one, how many two, zeros three. in a trillion? Ugh. I'm in supposed a, well, to be good at math. <laughs> yeah, you, you're the computer size. programmer. Uh, how many billion in a trillion? Okay, okay, it's a you thousand said, billion. Yes, okay, a thousand. A thousand billion. billion. Okay, yeah. so but let's say let's say they've spent a hundred billion on Ukraine. Oh, okay? you know what it is? Is it, it's because mm -hmm. the one the UK one was it in the UK one the one billion is like nine zeros and then the other ones six zeros. I don't know, but who, who cares about the UK? They they they're done. Hey, okay, but let's say, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so but but let's just say they spend a hundred billion, okay, American and let's convert US. that into seconds. So we're going to take for each dollar, we make that one second. So a hundred billion dollars is going to be. Let's we count here: one, two, three, one, two, three. It's going to be forty-one thousand years, give or take. 100 billion seconds is 41,000 years. If you convert every dollar into seconds. Dang. That, that's a, it's a big, and they've, they, they're over 100 billion. I'm, I'm con sure of it. They've spent a immense amount of money on Ukraine or committed, committed to a, an immense amount of money. Because a lot of those bills are saying, oh, no, we're allocating 40 billion towards a Ukrainian support, but then it gets sent in this mis this weapon system and some of it is cash and all of that stuff. So no one actually knows what the fuck's going on there, which is a um, classic of a money, money, money laundering operation. No one knows how much money is going where. Like, I mean, <clears throat> also the reason I'm nonchalant about this is because I know that like this is this has been like par for the course with state foreign foreign wars mm. for generations. Like I know that this is what's going on here. Like it's but but what concerns me course. is I'm not really concerned that this is that this whole thing with Russia goes nuclear. I'm I'm really not concerned about that. What I'm concerned I about am, I'd rather not No. Dude, if, if if the sun comes in at eleven o'clock at night then that's it. You know you're not gonna worry about it for too much longer. What what concerns me is if we go into a whole Korea Vietnam I got shit to like, do, bro. I can't get nuked. I got shit to do. Yeah, but the thing is, it's the funny thing about dying. You stop caring about the shit you have to do once you're dead. <laughs> but um, you can picture this because look, you had the Second World War. The Second World War spilled over into the Cold War, and then it sort of spilled over into uh, oh, Second World War spilled over into Korea Vietnam Cold War. That's what concerns me. It's not that it, it it goes up into this big climactic finale. Is that it gets mud, it gets into that muddy morass of proxy wars, and that because that gets very ugly very quickly. 
is going to look at the the amount of of lives lost just in Vietnam, and that was a proxy war. Vietnam actually the amount of KIA is comparable to the amount of people who die on the roads every year in the U.S. It actually wasn't that high. It's, yeah, okay, but you guys can't drive, so we're not gonna we're not gonna <laughs> not insult even the you Americans guys. now. <laughs> what do you mean, you guys? <laughs> Dude, you've been there for two years now, just about. Okay, you're one of you're one of the lads now. Okay. <sighs> I know how to drive, bro. I, I can drive a manual. Anyway, um, my point with that statistic is to show people that, like, even though it felt like a lot of casualties at the time, and honestly, I thought Vietnam was a pointless war and should have never happened. Um, in real terms, the 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 American people just didn't realize that they lost the appetite for casualties because. I mean, you compare that to like D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge, and it's like a drop yeah. in the bucket. It's like, yes, it is. But if you consider that America didn't declare war on Vietnam, they never officially declared war. Didn't they? Nope, they did not. Yeah. They put in troops under. There was some loophole that they used to get the troops into Vietnam, but they never officially declared war on yeah. the North Vietnamese or China. And the same with Cuba. They never declared war on Cuba or Russia. But they spent insane amounts of money and personnel on on those endeavors. And also, I, I hear your point about uh, people that die on the roads each day. But given in 1970, 1960, 1970, when Vietnam played off, the American population was, what, 40, 45 percent lower than it is now? Yeah. I'm I'm just saying the point of it is is that it's not that they were losing men, it's that they were losing the 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 uh pop the popularity war at home. That's what they lost. The, you know, the they Americans, weren't no no no. The they weren't gaining ground. Fight. Yeah, they, they, they lost the ground. will to fight. They they had hmm. the men like they just lost the will to fight because it because just was unpopular war. But it's a, it's the, it's the same as in Iraq. The, the 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 populace loses interest in the war when you don't gain ground. Yeah. If it doesn't look like you're winning, then the people don't want to do it anymore because no one wants to be a loser, except by maybe our government. Our government <laughs> likes losing. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. But but you see what yeah. I'm saying? I mean the the big the big crescendo finish to the whole Russian question, quote unquote, to put a bad spin on it. Um, and that's not my concern. My concern is, is decades of proxy wars going on and on and on and on. And people exploiting that for political reasons, like they're doing like they did with COVID, like they're doing with Ukraine now, all that. That's that's what that what's kind of grinding me. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Because let's face it, it was like, oh, your Putin's a mad guy, whatnot. Did Putin Putin is not gonna just for the fuck of a drop nukes on American targets or Ukrainian targets or on his mother-in-law's house. He's just not going to do that because as, as mad, let's say he is slightly unhinged. He still realizes what's the consequences of dropping a nuke. Every world leader that has nuclear capabilities realizes what's the repercussions of dropping a nuke on one of your adversaries. And no one is willing to take that mutual destruction thing is still very much in effect, he's not just going to start a nuclear war. No one's going to, except maybe Kim Jong Un or Winnie the Pooh. King. I don't think he, I don't even think Kim will. Like I, I yeah, I, yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't think I don't think it's like North Korea's leader. I don't even think they've got nukes. Honestly, I don't. I think, think that. I think North Korea's allies are like like you know North Korea is kind of like. You know that one do one mate of yours in the cl- in in the pub who's like really ready to fight and he's like the smallest oak and like he's yeah, trying mean, to pick a fight and the sp- rest of you yeah the rest of you like <laughs> bro calm down calm down like you're only this beam. brave because we're we're backing you up but we don't actually, yeah, actually want to fight so would, we need you to calm down that's North I would, Korea North I would Korea take a step says, further yeah. I, I would I would say North Korea is that that one slightly mentally challenged cousin you have. That's how North Korea, uh, I see North Korea for its allies, because that country is, there's, it, there's nothing oh, you there. Oh, like, you mean like Gainesville? 
the whole, yeah. everyone in the city. Hey, I just to be clear, I live in Florida. I'm allowed to make fun of cities in Florida because I live in Florida. Dude. People outside. <laughs> <laughs> outside, like I, I'm allowed to make fun of Gainesville because I well, live like, in Florida. Your your back your your backward your backwoods areas in Alabama. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would rather go to I would I've been to like Huntsville, Alabama, great place, Rocket City. <laughs> mm. There is nothing good about Gainesville. The only good <laughs> thing about Gainesville is that it somehow ends at some point geographically. It's contained. Like there's oh, nothing good about Gainesville. Florida. Show show me show me another another place in America that can set up a meth lab so quickly. Shit city, shit university, <laughs> shit everything. It's just awful. Like people shit on Jacksonville, but at least they've got like an NFL team. People say yeah, shit about do. Tampa. Tampa Bay's got like the, the national champions in football, hockey, everything. Like, and Tampa Bay gets a monster truck uh, race yeah, every year. Yeah. Right. So. People, people people talk <laughs> shit about Miami, but honestly, it's just because it's expensive. But it's fun to party there. People talk shit about Tallahassee, but guess what? Number one party school, top state champions in in oh, college dude. football. Ma- there Miami is, nothing is Cuba's good biggest about city. Hmm? Miami is Cuba's biggest city, dude. It is. It is. <laughs> there's there's nothing good to say about. Like I cannot figure out a good oh. thing to say about Gainesville. It's awful. Okay. So, so, so just to interrupt, um, my buddy Jamie that lives in Miami, if you hear this, dude, I'm, I'm not taking a diss on you, I promise. <laughs> so, like, there's nothing good to say about Gainesville. I, 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 I just, yeah. I, I never want to be there for any reason. <laughs> uh, and then, of uh, course, there's Orlando, which has got Disney. Um, so, at least they've yeah. got Disney, dude. Orlando's and, got and, Disney. And, Tampa Bay and, has great sports. Jacksonville has, yeah. you know, some trade and stuff. Miami is about- Miami party, Tallahassee party, Pensacola beaches. There's nothing good oh, about. Oh, about no, think think back. Gainesville. Pensacola. Do you do you re- do you remember what Pensacola was famous for in, in our age group of people, our generation? I think it's got like an air force base. Yeah, it's the air force base. You remember back in the day you had Jag. Was Jag was the, in Pensacola? Yeah, was they it, play, it played. It's, it was set in Pensacola. Yeah, at the Pensacola Air Force Base. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Huh. I completely mm-hmm. forgot. I just knew. I know it was a naval aviation show. I just didn't know it was specifically supposed mm. to yeah. be set in that Pensacola. In, and that in Pensacola, Wings of Gold. And that shows yeah. my age. <laughs> but uh, uh, on, on, a, on a different, just to t- change gears a bit, um, did, did Kanye buy a property in, in um, Gainesville? No. Then he got a bit dipped Why into the. Why would Kanye into, buy a property in Gainesville? I don't know. Maybe the meth screwed his brains up completely, or something. No, he's no, guys. Completely off the rock or rocker. Guys, no, no, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. People are like, oh, he's gone completely off the, uh, uh, like reservation. Yeah, like no, he hasn't. Kind. This has always been. This is always who he's been. He's literally a mentally unhealthy person <laughs> having a manic depressive episode right now. And we are watching him have that. Like, he needs actual mental. Like, that's the problem with being creative is that it often cre- correlates with these manic depressive e- episodes. And I genuinely feel bad for him because I think people like old Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos are taking advantage of somebody <laughs> who is in a serious manic depressive ep- episode. Like, yeah, and, but, and that's the other thing I saw, about Kanye. I saw that, another... like, he sticks so much, he throws so much shit at the wall until it sticks that it was only yeah. a matter of time before he started throwing this at the wall. Like it's it was... But I mean, did you see that that one interview? I can't remember with who it was. Where he wore this whole ski mask. Alex oh, it was Jones. With, with it was Alex like Jones, the only yeah. time I I ever saw Alex Jones not being the most insane person in the room. Person in the room. <laughs> yes. Alex uh, Jones. Jones. Alex Jones being the, the the responsible adult in the room, imagine that. <laughs> Pretty wild. <laughs> right. But but that is just that is the weirdest thing ever. But I saw some of the guys floated the the theory that it's one of two things. Others, when you when you, when you get involved with the Kardashian, you just they they completely drive you nuts. Or and uh, what I what I think is a possibility is if you look at all the celebrities that completely go off the rocker. 
I wonder if it isn't like a personal physician or something they have. They just pumps them so full of fucking narcotics that their mind just eventually lets go at some point. Because if you think back, like Britney Spears had a similar meltdown. Elvis went to shit. Michael Jackson fucking lost the plot. Hey, I wonder yo, if it's not... you leave the king of pop out of this. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's what that's what I'm saying. It, it, he, I don't think it. I, I really wonder if it's not like a personal physician or family member or friend or whatever. They just like fucking pumps them so full of narcotics to like a manager or something, just to keep them going. That at some point, you know, because every every everybody's gonna have their limits of how much narcotics you can fucking handle before you completely go batshit. Except Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is the goat. That guy is absolutely fucking awesome. I don't care who says what about him. He's the shit. Absolute Chad. Just absolute Mm. victory. Just unstoppable. Like, just wow. (laughs) There'll never be another. No, Um, (laughs) that guy's a fucking legend. (laughs) I I don't know. Like I said, like, again, nothing, like, Kanye's whole thing, like, his whole, uh, what's it, uh, what's it? Uh, they're calling him now Yadolf. Yadolf. His Yadolf <laughs> arc. Seriously? It's like, his, his Yadolf arc is just like... like but it's like... <laughs> okay, and, as, and, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's bad, but one of the things, like, Razor Fist pointed out is... It, it's the bunch... The shit he said on the Alex Jones show wasn't, wasn't necessarily bad because it was unique. We've heard all those talking points about Holocaust shit and, and the Jews and all that before. It's... it's it, it's it wasn't necessarily bad because it was unique. It was bad because it just wasn't even fucking funny or entertaining. Like at least if There's you're gonna no be that creative, like like if you're that creative, at least and if you're gonna be anti-Semitic and be that creative, at least come up with something like spicy. Like this, like what? No, we've heard this all before, bro. Like, but have you seen have you seen the memes about that? Which is to, which is to say again, to be clear, yeah, he said some really fucked up shit, up shit. which is bad, <laughs> very bad, but, the, but also. But the one meme I saw that that, that was really fucking funny is when I say, oh yeah, no, um, this guy made remarks about, it basically boils like he made remarks about the Jews running the world and what what what, and then and then he gets cancelled. He says all this other shit, and no one bats an eyelid, but he says something about the Jews and then he gets cancelled. That that was just fucking hilarious. But yeah, I don't know, dude. That guy went completely off the rocker. But uh, the other thing that I wanted to quickly touch on, did you see that um, the fucking uh, fine that the judge sla- slapped Alex Jones Jones with for the Sandy Hook thing? Alex Jones. Ah, <laughs> huh? uh, Alex oh. Jones. <laughs> I will eat your ass. <laughs> Oh, but Alex. did you did you check that? That was just absolutely okay. fucking insane. It was near. Uh, okay, so the thing with that is, it was obviously to make an example of him, right? Yeah, that the must problem, be that must be the case. The problem is, when you're trying to make an example of someone, you need to do it in such a way that the message gets across. And the way Without they proof. did it, yeah. The, all they the, the, did, all they did is they proved Alex Jones's point. Well, no, I was going to say what they if they wanted to make a point, they shouldn't have made it the fine that high because yeah. now the fine is so large that it almost becomes comical how large the fine is. And so the, almost, seriousness it is of the, point, the seriousness of the point gets diluted by how comically large it would be like I, I'm saying I'm going to fine you a gazillion dollars. Yeah, one hundred billion that's, dollars. That's <laughs> a lot of money, but it's so large that like the human mind compre- comprehend it. And so my intent of making an example out of you fails because I made the fine actually too high. Yeah, but it's like uh, like a, one meme I saw floating around on on one of the Discord servers. They're like, okay, cool, you can you can be one of the the head honchos of the Holocaust, and NASA offers you a fucking chief technical job. But uh, you say something about a mass school shooting and they and they fine you a billion dollars, and and it, it's 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 like you said it's comical, it's too much. They they took it that step too fucking far. Yeah, um, I I don't know man, like it's 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 just yeah, uh, yeah. But 
Yeah, on on a lighter note. Rip Jones. Rip the homie Alex Jones. Although I will say now, actually, quick quick sign. So between Alex Jones being sort of proven right and the Yadoff saga and everything with with Big Rona and all that, I I will bring. This is something I've been meaning to discuss with you for a while. My biggest Mm. issue now is that now, like conspiracy theorists, the term yes like lots of people were wrongly called conspiracy theorists yes but the the label exists for a reason and now like one of my biggest bugbears is that now people will think that even the wildest most objectively proven wrong shit could be true just because 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 now it's like oh well this was true then who knows what else is true this is true but this is this is what a lot of a couple of people have pointed out now it's it, exactly the same thing happened with the term racist or bigot or homophobe or transphobe and all the other phobes that they throw around. They took yeah. that they, they, they watered it down so much and they muddied the water so much that the the the, the term itself had lo- has lost meaning. Because I like in my world, a conspiracy theorist, like when the tinfoil hat sense of the word. It's someone that's oh no the moon landings didn't happen and oh my god okay uh, can I just there, t- there was there, there was that never for ten seconds as an actual scientist it. okay Go so I'm an actual scientist I'm not a physicist I'm a computer scientist you know how I know the moon landing was real maybe they didn't land at the precise time they said but we have actually there are people who believe we've never been to the moon okay so what you need to do is quickly Google the term laser range finders okay yeah. laser range finders. The U.S. and the Russians have both planted laser rangefinders range on the fucking on the surface on the surface, on the surface of, the of the moon. You, you yeah. a normal human being, can literally take a powerful enough laser, point it at the moon, and it'll come right back at you. Meaning that yeah. we have been on the fucking moon. You can literally point a laser pointer at the moon, and it'll come back. I'm so tired of this no moon landing conspiracy. Like it just like it 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 grates me so much. And people but, but, will point out dumb shit like, oh, how could we radio people on the moon, but we can't make cell phones have reception now? It's like <laughs> you genuinely just don't understand signals and systems. How, Shut the fuck up, you paste-eating we... fucking retard. Go watch Jerome's <laughs> show then, you fucking retard. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, but I mean, that that's my point. Okay, oh. in, in my world, your tinfoil ad, conspiracy theorists, people that believe, oh, the moon landing never happened, Hiroshima and Nagasaki never happened. The Holocaust never happened. That's in my world. That's your conspiracy theory loons. Okay. Yeah. The government stealing billions of dollars or the, the government doing dodgy shit to its population to be able to effectively embezzle money from the populace. That's not a conspiracy theory. That has been happening since the fucking dawn of time. Yeah. Okay. If you, Even if you before don't we had. Nuclear weapons are real. Just like go take a <laughs> short trip to like the Bikini Atoll. Just a short <laughs> trip. St- stay there for like. Oh, you Five, mean the bikini atoll? Minutes. That's that's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, like that that geographic area where the bikini atoll is just chill there. I mean, clearly, if nukes aren't real. Uh, sorry, continue. <laughs> but I mean, that that's that's conspiracy theory theories in my world. Okay, it's it's stuff that's that's absolutely blatantly wrong. But your government doing dodgy shit, that's older than democracy. Quite literally, back in the day when you had regions running around and kings and lords and dukes and shit. And no one had a vote. They still did dodgy shit to steal money from the populace. It's as it's as old as as, as humanity yeah. about. Okay, it's not a conspiracy. Governments do dodgy shit. If you give anyone that amount of power, eventually they're going to go bad. It's just the fact of yes, you do have your outliers. I know, but as a rule, they are going to go bad. And especially yeah. if you if you put guys like I mean, look at the U.S. Senate. Yeah, some of those senators as some some of those senators has been senators longer than South Africa and South Africa has been a free quote unquote democracy. I have okay. it on good authority that that uh, Nancy Pelosi was there at the signing of the Declaration, Declaration of, of Independence. Independence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the one that opposed it. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen like the young Nancy Pelosi pictures? Yes. Yeah, I, young Nancy you, was stacked. stacked. But did you see the? Recently, they had these the side by side pictures of um old uh Jacinda Arden, like when she when she like started in politics to now, dude, corruption chows at your soul, eh? 
You can I you wear on your face. I yeah, you should, okay, fine. You should look it up, dude. Because Jacinda Arden was not too bad looking when she was younger. Um, yeah, we won't we won't go into any detail now because we might be called uh, names. Uh, <laughs> is there like a comparison thing? Uh, no. Haven't you seen it on Twitter, dude? No, I I ha- I don't like get into like I haven't been in like poll Twitter in a while. Let's see. Oh damn, young to see, kinda. Yeah, she was kind of kind of hot, dude. Hey, and, damn, uh, son. I, I, the years I, have the years I, have not been good to her. Damn, son. I I would. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'd get into I'd get into her Hobbit hole. For reference, guys, they <laughs> they they shot the Lord of the Rings movies in 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 New Zealand. That's in New that, Zealand, that's yeah. A joke there. Um. Yeah, I'd get into her heart. Yeah, damn. Young to see. The, like the, have you seen the young Nancy though? Yeah, I, I actually let me quickly look it up. It's young Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, like, damn. Young Nancy kind of stacked. I'm looking at this, I like, like there's one with with uh, JFK well, he, looking at her. I like, yeah, I, I'm thinking okay, the just, same thing, JFK. Well, <laughs> if I type in Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi Young is the second suggestion on, on on my google list and yes i still use google fuck off yeah uh, let's yeah, Nancy, check images. there's a picture of like jfk looking at her i'm thinking damn jfk i'm thinking the same thing son i'm thinking the same <laughs> damn thing well in, in in all fairness um as rumor has it jfk would would tap anything with the skirts on so that's not that saying is too- also true <laughs> he's a classic example of a of great men oh, speaking great of flaws like he's speaking he of JFK, logically dude. incapable of keeping his dick in his pants. Yeah. Yeah. But did you see the the, the um if files the FBI declassified? Okay. So about let's JFK. get to the FBI declassified yes. and the files. Okay. Yes. Let's get into the good Everything stuff. like there. Okay. So I've thought about this. They have those things being declassified have very limited internal value to me. And by that, I mean, internally, they don't reveal any new information to me. That is to say, they only really confirm things that I had already inferred, but they do have Mm. great external value to me. Meaning that if I say, if say I'm in an argument with somebody who's, you know, uh, of of a different sort of socio-political bent to me and i'm like mm. well you know social media you know um and and the and the fbi work together and the fbi is not on on the level at all prior to the twitter files and the cia files they would just be like oh well you're just a conspiracy theorist now yeah. i can say well look here's the evidence now and for all so that's what i mean by it has external value in that now i can use but internal the value is limited. It just sort of confirms things that I'd already inferred. But see, the way I think about, about it, it's it has very little short-term. I don't think about internal external. I think about short-term, medium-term, long-term. I think short-term, it won't make any difference because it just won't. We've seen this time and time again in politics. You can have groundbreaking news coming out and people, it'll just fall by the wayside in the short term. But I think in the medium to long term, it'll have a, a very, very big effect on how the let's say how the history books are written in 20, 30, 40 years time. I think stuff like that's going to have a big impact on how the American political or social political sphere looks, because stuff like that initially, because humans are just like that. We don't want our world shook. We don't want everything to be changed overnight. So most people are not going to want to believe that their government or the CIA, the CIA, that's a government organization, is nefarious. They don't want to believe that because that's not what they grew up with. That's a, that's not what they were taught. But I think in a generation or two, two's time, stuff like that's going to have a big impact on how the how the populace um, acts or behaves in, towards the the government and the government organizations. Okay. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, I guess there's also the long-term, short-term um, view of how how it is. But yeah, I mean, uh, like there's like the stuff in the Twitter files. I'm just like, 
And I already knew this. Yeah, it's old news. We, uh, did, we've known just, the CIA took out JFK I, yeah, years like, ago. This just confirms what we already knew. Like, like I said, it's just so that now if I'm having, say, an argument with someone, they're like, I'll just be like, well, actually, here's the actual proof now. Yeah. I mean, the CIA took out the, that whole family's political career. Because I don't think if, if your surname is Kennedy, I don't think anybody's surname in America that's Kennedy will even go close to the political scene whatsoever, just for pure fear that it will get taken out somehow. No, they're still, they're too busy dating Taylor Swift. <laughs> dude, did everybody's they, did... dating Taylor Swift. <laughs> no, dude, like Taylor I'm su- I'm surprised Swift. you haven't hooked up with Taylor Swift yet. I'm getting there, bro. I'm getting there. She's too tall or, or for me, getting... though. Or am I getting my country singers confused now? Which is the one that's always singing about the breakup songs? Oh, no, I'm yeah, thinking of Taylor it now. Swift. It's Taylor is it, Swift. It's Taylor is Swift. Is it Taylor Swift? Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah she Adele was dating. Now. She was She was dating a Kennedy, Connor Kennedy. Adele's the British version of Taylor Swift, uh, and she doesn't sing oh. country. I will say, though, like, if if you've had that many bad, like, and no doubt, like, Taylor is probably, like, nobody is the villain in their own story at the end of the day. That's one of the exactly. things that I have... I've I mean, really I, I mean you'll, right you'll be able to, exp- maybe you'll be able to explain this in simple terms, okay? But what's the first, if you've got a mathematical problem, what's the first thing that you look for? A common factor. The common denominator. <laughs> I think yeah. I think she should, she should go do some um, community college maths and just uh, figure out how to look That's for the common denominator. Like, <laughs> it, look, I mean, no doubt, guys, like John Mayer and all that are, are pretty skeezy, but... If if you've dated this many different guys and and it's always oh woe is me then uh, I, I don't know Taylor maybe you're making some <laughs> bad decisions here somewhere along the lines maybe the problem is in part you you know like you making some bad decisions oh, dude, I will never you're... be able to date another white woman in my town again now like once this podcast <laughs> like do not like you <laughs> you think like saying anti-Semitic shit is bad. <laughs> you can't say anything bad about Taylor Swift. Like there is like what? an army of white women that'll just like, like all the soror- like I'm gonna walk past sorority row and they're all just gonna be like throw you with just, tomatoes and stuff. Just the fucking <laughs> no, dude. I live in Florida. They'll have actual guns. Like I'm gonna need some serious <laughs> body armor. But, like, but what's the fucking... what's that old that old saying in the South? Um, God's gun and country. God's gun. God guns yeah. and country or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I just like, not that like I was planning on dating any of the sorority girls now, but like now, like that's, that's completely, completely <laughs> that's out your of best window. sale. <laughs> Talk shit oh. about Taylor Swift, like Taylor Swift in and Florida. pumpkin spice. Uh, while I'm at it, fuck pumpkin spice. Fuck pumpkin uh, spice, I'm with you there, bro. So like now I'll never date another white woman but, but, in Florida again. But, um, but on the, on the topic, topic of coffee, dude, something I've, I've kind of grown fond of recently is like just a splash of vanilla in your coffee. Have you tried that? Yeah, you can. You, I've got a Ooh. bottle of vanilla creamer in my fridge right now, bro. Okay, f- uh, fine, Aiden. Can I, can I get you some, some pads for that uh, estrogen <laughs> levels of yours? <laughs> Fucking vanilla that's, creamer in your fridge, that's yes. That's that's but it's delicious. good. <laughs> it's good, uh, a nice strong black coffee with a bit of vanilla in it. Mm. Wait, I just a... googled Taylor Swift height. She's she's the same height as me. She's five eleven. I thought she was six foot four or something ridiculous like that. Five eleven is yeah, that's well, it, it's it's sort of on the tall side for a chick, but not silly tall. She's not not getting a, a career in the WNBA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. have you seen that story, bro? What Brittany Griner? Yeah, we'll, we'll trade. We'll trade you a, a mediocre basketball, female basketball player for international arms dealer. <sighs> <laughs> like maybe I'm the bad guy, but I just I, I don't care anymore. I don't. Did, did what? I don't. What is Joe Biden's administration fucking thinking? You know thinking? what? I, I'm I'm with Joe Rogan on this one. How about like I hate what aboutism, but I like how about letting out all the people in prison in America for the same thing? Exactly. I mean, about, and they they the VP old um, Kamala Harris, which 
surprisingly has the very same um, facial features as Jacinda Arden. Um, how about letting all the people she kept in prison? Right now, bullshit. there are people in prison. Yeah. They're in prison her, right now. Let them her go shit as well. still has got, yeah. For for simple marijuana charges, let them go. Compensate the guys that, that Kamala Harris kept in jail way longer than they should have been. Yeah. Let before them you out. let them up before you, you negotiate an international arms dealer for a, a a basketball player that fucking very well knew that marijuana is illegal in Russia and she still fucking took the shit in there. Again. I, I know people are like outraged, like, especially the conservatives. By the way, that was such a conservative self-own because on, on the yes. one end, they could have they could have just been like, if they really wanted to to reach out to the, to the you know black community, they could have found a less caustic way to go about objecting to this. Mm-hmm. Like the way they objected to this made them look bad to black voters. I'm just going to point that out. Right? Well, they, they could have they could have swapped. Josie Smollett for her. That'll be that would have been a better trade. Juicy Smollett. Yeah. Juicy Smollett. <laughs> Wait, how do you pronounce it? Uh, let, let's call him Juicy. Let's call him Juicy Mullet and leave it at that. Juicy Smollett. Just small Smollett. Uh, anyway, whatever. I don't <laughs> care. What the fuck? Uh, are you? <laughs> but uh, um, so, speaking of prison terms, did you see the absolute hoo ha in South Africa about um, Chris Harney's murder that got Janus Wallace that got released? Okay, I'm going to say something that will make me lose all my, like, cons- like my libertarian cred. Chris Honey is probably the only communist that I actually liked. Like, yeah, but, okay, that, that, the, the point, that my reasoning is, our justice system is supposed to be based on reform. Supposed to be based on reform. Janus Wallace became eligible for parole back in the early 2000s, according to the... And, and everybody's supposed to be equal in front of the law. So who he, the fact that it was a political assassination is not supposed to be um, taken into consideration. If you treat everybody equal in front of the law, he should have gotten parole in the early 2000s already. And they kept on denying his parole. And, he, and I mean, he's like 70 something now. The dude's not going to start shit now. His whole life is fucked in any case. And uh, they made a big hoopla of it. But now the other point, the other thing that I like to point out is the guy um, that uh, assassinated Hendrik Verwoerd. Mm-hmm. The ANC left him to literally rot in jail. He died in jail. Well, effectively, he was still in jail when he died of pneumonia. He got planted outside the, the state hospital next to the, uh, close to the, the, the prison where he was in an unmarked grave. And there was maybe 10 people at his funeral. And he was arguably the one guy that single-handedly, the person that did the most to fight against the whole apartheid system. And the ANC just left him to fucking rot in jail. But now they want to make a hoopla about uh, Janus Wallace getting parole for, after being in jail for 30 years. It's just the, the, the absolute hypocrisy of that. It's, just, ah, it's absolutely silly. It actually doesn't really surprise you. I was like, yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah, with friends like the ANC, you don't need enemies, dude. Because you go and take out the person that they labeled the architect of apartheid. You take him out, and they leave you to rot in jail. Uh, maybe he knew some other stuff that they didn't want out there. Yeah, okay, given the ANC didn't put him up to it, I'm pretty convinced it was a, an internal thing of the, 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 in, the old NP party that, that, that paid him. But, I mean, the point being, I mean, you, you, you catch my reasoning here. Oh, yeah. He took out your number one bad guy, the epitome of evil for the ANC. He took him out, and they leave him to rot in jail. I mean, and the only reason he didn't get a death sentence is because he was a foreign national, and our um, uh, our the foreign um, affairs minister didn't want to want any more heat on the government than they already had at that stage with all the sanctions and stuff. So they didn't want to execute a foreign national. That's why he didn't get the death sentence. The ANC oh. didn't do jack squat to help him in any way whatsoever, but he took out their number one bad guy. But now they want to, and let's face it, Chris Horney, Chris Horney was taken out on a hit. Someone within yeah. the ANC paid Janus Wallace to take him out. That's just a fact. It's yeah. like the CIA took out JFK, 
and it's probably the, the the person that took out that 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 signed the contract for for Chris Harney was probably his surname probably started with an M. You can take that yeah. to the bank. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. It's um, <laughs> yeah, uh, and I guess it's it's kind of like you know I've I've reached a point where it's like uh, why do I yeah. even care? Yeah, it's like this is so par for the course for South Africa. Like, mm. but now, but, but you you also probably saw that they they um hopped on until our uh, the 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 like the chief in charge of uh, what's that um of ESCOM. He's also resigned now. I I really I kind of so my the one good thing I will say about ESCOM is that it it provides such a great example for me when I speak to people in the United States when they're like we should just have like one nationalized electrical oh, grid out. No, like, no. Look at how it's working out. Mm. That's that's actually like there's that demotivational of like the Titanic. Thinking <laughs> and it says everyone's life has a purpose and some and maybe yours is is to be an example of how not to be south africa is that like nationalize but, this this that i'm like i'm but, always but, like let me tell you about my home country but, but you you raise a very very good point and south africa is a very good case study for exactly that you must be very careful what what i want to say national laws or national institutions or centralized institutions you put in place. Because if it goes well, it goes really well. But if it goes bad, it goes really bad. And yeah. our national electricity um, um, supplier is an example of that. Our national health care is an example of that. Our national education system is an example of that. Because when it was going good, it went really well. I mean, our ESCOM was world class. I'm so Literally tired of people class. being like, Canada is so great with healthcare, oh, and Europe is so great, <laughs> everyone's so happy. I'm like, yo, yes. buddy, uh, Canada's de facto <laughs> answer now is just kill yourself. <laughs> That's how their national health care is going. But I mean, did you did you see that article about she, um, the, the lady, I can't remember her name now. Um, she was an, a, a Paralympic gold medalist swimmer. Okay. Yeah. And she she had one she needed some sort of surgery or um, treatment or something, and the yeah. legitimate suggestion was a was to why don't you consider euthanasia? Yep. yep. I mean, and that's not a person you that's that's killing yourself. I mean, and, and it's not like she's a burden on society in any way, shape, or form. I mean, she's an Olympic gold medalist, and that's that's their response to her request for for certain treatments. Um, and then UK's public health. I mean, if you speak to, to people that that, that um, lives in London, their public health care is almost, it's barely better than we have in South Africa. Your waiting times are insane. The treatment is mediocre at best. It it doesn't work. But all, the, but all they have to do is look how it worked in South Africa. If it goes bad, it's going to go really, really bad. And for all the faults that that like let's let's take America for instance, for all the faults that America has with their healthcare system in general, at the at at the least you get decent treatment when I, you go to a hospital. I maintain yes, one of the you, biggest issues with with healthcare is that it it is a triangle. You can and it's got three points. One point is good, the other point is affordable, and the third point is universal. You can only ever have two of those three at any good given time. But, and America has tried to morph to have all three at the same time, and it, it is doesn't work. And it's just a fucking mess. Like so uh, bad. It's, it's 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 the old the old business adage. Trying to have be cheap, all three at the same time is like you no, can have it cheap. Those, mm -hmm. You can have it cheap. You can have it fast. You can have it good. You can pick two of them. You can never have all three. It can't yeah. be cheap, fast, and good. It's either cheap and fast, cheap and good, and it takes a long time, or it's good, and it takes a while, or you fork out the cash. Yeah. But and the, but but a couple of a couple of South Africans have pointed it out. Just look at us. Look at what a, how how good our institutions worked at one point. And how abysmal they are now, 
and then fucking realize that centralized control over your institutions does is not the best way to do it. It's not. Be yep. careful of what be man, you you've also mentioned it before. Be careful what powers you give to the president and your your government. Because yes, today it's the government that you like. Tomorrow it might be the government that you don't like. The and would you want them to have change hands inevitably yeah. they always and change hands it always changes hands and think about it do you want your enemy to have that control over you and if you have to think about that for more than two seconds then you don't give that to the guys that you like because it's going to come back and bite you in the ass almost guaranteed yep yep and uh yeah and i guess it's it's in in South Africa, it's changed hands to a bunch of thieving jerks. Which, speaking of thieving, now, how's your boy SBF doing? Sam Bankman Freed. Sam Bank. Okay, now you've, you, you're going to have to make me on. Debacle. Oh, your. Hmm. Okay, hold was, on, hold on, hold on. Before we fantastic. start that, I, I just want to give a huge shout out to my boy at Mike Clausen90 on Twitter. Um, He's got this uh he's got this uh seal profile picture and he's got still what I think the greatest tweet on the S S B F F T X debacle, which is Bro had a net worth of sixteen billion US dollars and risk it all for this with a skull. The grippy must have been unfathomable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it's a picture of his now ex girlfriend. <laughs> Caroline, like <laughs> <laughs> for those okay, of you but, who are in the Gen X and Boomer generation of the of the five of you that'll listen to the show, the grip <laughs> must have been unfathomable is a reference to how incredibly tight and great her vagina must have felt. Yeah, but I mean, come on, dude, it's a white guy with an afro. Why the would anyone trust him in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Shout out, Mike. Uh, like, that yo, know, that that tweet was fucking platinum, dude. That was Absolutely the greatest brilliant. tweet I've seen all year. It is my <laughs> pick for literal tweet of the year. The grippy yeah. must have been unfathomable. Huh? Like <laughs> holy grail grippy. Like just ah, oh, for sixteen but, bill, really, really, yes, yes. yes. I, that's what I'm. I'm kind of mad about. Like you risked sixteen bill for her, her. No, really? that's, that's and, and even after that she's still the worst part is it, it, like let's like fact away from her, her looks and stuff that she she ain't even loyal bro she's turning you <laughs> in right now she's testifying against your ass right now at least with oh. bonnie and clyde fucking bonnie was 10 toes down loyal as shit this, Yo, this they woman, went like, down in a hail of bullets with you <laughs> this bitch just turns right the fuck around also people are like Oh, it's mean to make fun of her looks and all that. I like. I would. No, I not. would argue it's me. Far. What she did was far, far worse. Far worse. Far, far, far greater number of people. I mean, and I, I, I really thought the senator sleeping with a Chinese spy was like peak, peak thinking with your dick, until I saw yeah. that shit. Yeah, at least just... the, at least the Chinese spy <laughs> was hot. Exactly, dude. At least there was some there were some benefits in that fucking equation. <laughs> this guy just but but like, like that's says, not, like like I feel like if I walked <laughs> in and like my and I caught my wife cheating on me, like at least if the dude was better looking than me, right? Like if it was yeah. like if I walk in and my girl's getting plowed by Michael B. Jordan, you know, Garrett Top. <laughs> yeah, like by, by Michael B. Jordan, you know, Black Panther, Killmonger, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I, I, I'd be yeah, like, you, can, you know what, I, I walk in, I'd look, I'd be like, yo, y'all need some yeah. snacks, like some energy yeah, you can, or something. Baby, you can you understand that, job. but I mean, if you, if you <laughs> like, walk in, even if it's like Ron Jeremy, and, yeah. and for the younger folks, go Google Ron Jeremy, you, then, you know, but I mean, if it's like, like that guy or Ron Jeremy or something, you can kind of understand it. But I mean, if you walk in there and it's Carrot Top. Or Joe Biden. Um, <laughs> dude, like, what the what? fuck? <laughs> what? That's 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 my thing, right? Like, if you're gonna cheat, <laughs> cheat for an upgrade. If you're gonna leave me, leave me for an upgrade. Like, it's, yeah, it's just like yeah, I, I, just, it's, uh-uh. it's, 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 it feels shitty getting dumped in any situation or being cheated on in any situation. Yeah. But at the very least, 
on some level, I know morally it doesn't make it any better, but on some level, like, but if it's in the upper, if it's, a, if it's a, you, yeah, if yeah. your ego feels better or something <laughs> feels better knowing that it was for an upgrade. But if it's it for somebody upgrade, who's just, yeah. uh, what? <laughs> oh fuck no, dude. Uh, uh, uh. But that, but but that raise that the old FTX thing showed me that a couple of guys on on the one couple of guys that I chat with often that are heavy into to crypto, but like uh-huh. Bitcoin. They heavy into Bitcoin. Crypto exchange They've is been, first of all stupid. It's it's antithetical yes. to the idea of cryptocurrency. You cryptocurrency. shouldn't be okay. For those of you who don't know, FTX was a fast growing cryptocurrency exchange, which means that they stored all your money or stored your crypto in a centralized area and said, "Don't worry, we'll keep it safe to, for you and hang on to it." The way crypto works is that you have multiple ways of holding on to it. You can put it in an exchange, or you can hold on to it in a wallet, either an online yeah. wallet or some form, or like or offline, a physical, offline, or, uh, physical, offline physical wallet, wallet. Yeah. which you know, admittedly, many people have lost. But the whole point mm. of cryptocurrency is that it's a decentralized re- uh, uh, ledger. It's a decentralized, uncontrolled currency. It's a trustless system, and Having an exchange is actually antithetical in a certain yeah. way of thinking to the whole point of crypto. Keep, Having an exchange your, of any kind. Keeping your 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 crypto on exchanges is basically the same as as we're from the government to me here to help. Yeah, it's, it's not going to end well. It's, I mean, it's going back to central bank. I mean, yeah, it's not really because they can't just print more crypto and devalue your crypto. Uh, but, but they still have. The, they still own. They still have. But, but, the the guys that I chat with regularly that's but they're heavy into Bitcoin. They are like Bitcoin absolutists. Yeah. They've been saying for years wow. now it's Bitcoin or nothing. These other cryptocurrencies are bullshit. Stay away from them, you're gonna lose your money. And I must say they've been proven right time and time again. Because and it's, FTX is not the first um, cryptocurrency that went belly up. It's not it's, that it's they. Not, it's 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 it's. And it's they, not the last one that's going to go. First of all, they said we would never use your money, uh, your, your crypto. Else. Well, they yeah. did, and they, they did. And, and then he and then he he basically allowed investors' money to u- be used by his girlfriend, yeah. in her investing corporation <laughs> Alameda. I still got sixteen bill for this, bro. Sixteen this. billion. So, but so, I mean, did, like what? These, these crypto exchanges is basically the same as the old school hedge funds, hedge funds managers. Yeah. You give them so, a absolute buttload of money, and they say, "I promise, I won't, I won't piss your money out on cocaine and hookers." And guess what's the first thing they fucking do? Apparently, they had some pretty wild fucking orgies at FTX headquarters, <laughs> which again, I can I, fucking imagine, dude. I, 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 I'm still trying to fathom. <laughs> I'm trying to fathom oh, how this went no. down, but it's, and also not to mention the fact that they were bo- that that the the whole involvement of their own FTX coin that they were borrowing against. Basically, long story short, they thought, "Fuck it, let's just go big. If we win go big, big we win home. big." Yeah, and it's just. Yeah. And but it's like, do you remember um, before YouTube, there was this one guy that he he claimed that he had like. Basically, what YouTube is today, but before YouTube ever existed, and he actually got guys to invest in this company. That was with the the whole Silicon Valley boom that they had. <clears throat> he got guys. He said, and he's got the next big thing: video streaming, live video feeds, all of that shit. Effectively, what YouTube is now, and he got people to invest millions. I'm mean, talking about like early 90s, early to, early to late 90s, early 2000s to invest millions of dollars in his company and he had jack squat but like literally he had nothing well that's nothing. the problem in no the problem with emerging technologies is that it's very yeah. hard to distinguish a solid product product from the, what we call vaporware which is like theoretical yeah. mock-up example stuff and so that's why the value there's always value in having somebody who's quite technically competent um yes. on your investing staff because like even even I who I haven't I'm not by any stretch of the imagination a fantastic soft software engineer I'm a slightly above average software engineer but even I have the technical chops to be like yeah mm. this is bullshit like I would be able yeah. to spot something you know, like this is just all but, vaporware this is bullshit but I mean that's the one thing that I've that I've checked with all these cryptocurrencies 
Bitcoin seems to be the only one that's actually sort of, yes, it fluctuates heavily. Yes, the price goes up and down. It's got booms and busts, but it's still around. And it's been around for a, a number of years now where all the other cryptocurrency, a lot of the cryptocurrencies that have sprung up has just gone defunct or imploded spectacularly. Um, but like you said, it's, it's emerging technology. The same thing you had back in the day when um, people were selling, oh, we've got the next big video platform or the next big MySpace music platform or whatever, and they just don't have anything to, to put in it. So it's all just a house of cards. The second the the Ponzi scheme has run its course, the whole thing fucking collapses. Yeah. So, so buy uranium, kids. You can always sell that to the to the Russians. I <laughs> can't wait till like I wake up tomorrow morning, it's fucking CIA at my door. <laughs> great, right? Although I, See, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, like I'm I live safe. in Florida, it's like living in a very badly moderated GTA server. Like, <laughs> went out the other day and there was a dude on a fucking motorcycle with like corrugated iron strapped to his back and. That was just like a Thursday afternoon. I was mm. like, didn't but even Florida, blink at it. Florida is weird because you you have scenes like that, which is something you see every day in in rural India or rural Pakistan or places like that or South Africa, and then you've got like fucking Nick Orlando Gators. where you've got this whole Disney World there, it's top of the line, state of the art, every fucking thing. All the way to little hick towns in the middle of fucking nowhere in the swamps, and Florida is one of those. It really is a hodgepodge state. For a... <laughs> oh, dude, best bodies. Yeah, so I've heard. Talk about those towns. <laughs> uh, yeah. You so must look like, go alligator hunting, dude. I'm not. I'm not going into the fucking swamps with anyone until I trust them, because oh. it is so easy to disappear in there. Like. <laughs> Like, oh, by the way, just to cap off the whole SBF FTX thing, mm, yes, yeah, um, yeah. just to point out, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, this is why we need crypto regulation. Literally no, everything these no. people did was illegal. There are no laws we could have enacted that could have stopped this. Like yep. all they all everything, pretty much everything they did was already illegal. Uh, it was like, already I, illegal. Yeah. It's a, and also F, SBF is now out on fucking Sam Bankman free was out on fuck knows how much bail, which I don't think he, his, he, they actually paid. I think his parents probably like leveraged the value of one of their houses against the bail. Yeah. But like he's out on bail. Meanwhile, Ross Ulbricht, the guy who made the Silk Road, is still in prison forever. Yeah. Just just so you know the balance of the world you live in. Oh yeah, and what was it? Was it Snowden that um shout got out Russians? Snowden and, and Ross Ulbricht. Yeah. Is Snowden now got um, Russian citizenship? Yeah. Yeah, because Russia basically gave him sanctuary because UK fucking sold him out completely because they wanted to deport him to, to the States. So, yeah, he's, he's now a Rus Russian citizen. But it just goes to show, I mean, the, uh, the, the powers that be would, would let an international arms dealer go. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's indirectly responsible for what, a hundred, two hundred thousand deaths at least mm. over the last decade, but they they want to imprison Eric uh, Snowden and Ross Ulbricht and Ross Ulbricht. I mean, they want to imprison those guys for the till the end of time, but they'll let a, a literal fucking arms dealer go. It's just, it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I mean. Welcome to the Twilight Zone, I guess. Is is, is <laughs> I it's like what 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 like what are I gonna say here, man? Like it it be like that. It just be like that. Like deal with it. <laughs> but but every now and again, dude, I will sit back and I'll think of uh, about the timeline that that I live in, and it just feels so fucking unreal. I mean, if you think about it, it it, it if you think back over the years, all the shit that's happened, it feels like. A fucking novel that it just it's absolutely ridiculous fever dream. crazy shit i want to wake up I, I really hope i wake up and it's like all of a <laughs> dream and it's like 2010 still that'd be great oh dude, dude up, you, know, you know what image just popped into my mind 
I don't know if John, you've saw if you ever John saw John McAfee's that. still alive. I'm like, hell yeah. Oh, Mr. Mr. McAfee. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you ever saw the Family Guy episode. We're at the end of the episode. Ah, dude, this, I don't know if this is before your time. I, I don't think it's. Do you remember Dallas? The the soap opera Dallas. Yeah, yeah. There was this I mean, one Family Guy episode where they had the episode. JR. Yes. And then JR's wife woke up and JR comes out of the shower and she's like, I had the weirdest dream. That's that's the fucking image I just got when you said you hope you wake up someday. It's that fucking crazy shit. I really hope it is just like a fucking <laughs> dream. I would love. Nothing would oh, make dude. me happier than to wake up and know like the past 15 years were all just a fever dream. I would be yeah. so happy. And uh, what's his name? The the Frenchman with the big, with a with a knob is still still president of France. Um, <laughs> but uh, on a tick on a tick topic, we actually have a tick topic, dude. Did you check uh, the the um the the shit they got right? They they figured out with the fusion. My tick topic was pointing out why the moon is actually real and like we actually oh, been yeah. there. But yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, well. Uh, a recent tech topic. Did you see what they the, what they managed to do with the fusion now in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, at what labs? Uh, you tell uh, somewhere in Southern yeah. California. Yeah. Yeah, it, it pisses me off That's, that it was in California, not in Texas. But it's let, pretty. It's pretty wild. That. I'm actually kind of mad that they did it now because my running joke was always like fusion is only ten more years away. That's like the yeah, running that, joke. And now, and now, they, now they, it's they, like they, oh, they, no, I can't make that joke anymore. Although, yeah, like the circumstances was, was under, which, under which they did it were very. Also, I don't. I haven't actually read the paper or looked at the mathematics behind it, so I'm not going to comment. Uh, again, I'm not a physicist. Uh, I'm a computer scientist, but I, I will. So, but like the circumstances they did it, like they're really going to have to work hard to scale that to make to that scale. scale. That. Yes, but but what what what's a good thing for me is even if it's on a very very small scale, they. They still managed to get more energy out of the fusion process than they put in. Yeah. Which is more progress than they've made on fusion um, in the last two decades. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's a, at least it's moving in a direction. And, I mean, like you've also said, if, you, if we want to really, really bump humanity up te- technology-wise, like actually get another great big leap in technology, we're going to need energy and we're going to need a lot of it. And yeah. the 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 most efficient way to get that amount of energy will be with fusion. If we can get fusion um, uh, energy generation to work. Planet side anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If you if we keep it planet side, because uh, well, let's be honest, to do it in outer space, I think that's a bit further away than getting fusion to be to be efficient and 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 profitable. But yeah, I thought that was. And if you think about it, I mean, they've been working on that for what now the last thirty years. On fusion, now they've been act- act- actively um, working on it. All the geeks in the lab somewhere. Thirty years. And, uh, they've been working on that for like multiple generations. Generations. Since, yeah. Since oh, the that's first true. Yeah. Fusion. Like you see, like okay, yeah. next step is fusion. And it's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, just 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 for the the, the non nuclear geeks listening, um, your fission yeah, is what we have. Fission is what we have now with our nuclear reactors that generate electricity for us. Um, it's where you pull two particle, you pull a particle apart, and that releases energy. Fusion is where you squish them together, and that's what the sun does. So or pretty much any star, yeah. Yeah, well, our sun is a star, but we don't talk about that. Okay, and it's like that time you kissed your cousin. We don't talk about it, bro. <laughs> hey, I live in Florida, not Alabama, bro. <laughs> I'm Florida, oh, dude. not Alabama, bro. <laughs> Although, <laughs> although, <laughs> if Taylor Swift was my cousin, I mean, <laughs> I might, I might, <laughs> I might. <laughs> we played off to the eggnog at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I was like, had a little bit too much whiskey. I might. Taylor Swift is like, she, she oh. really from the country? Then I, I might, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh fuck no! Dude, the other thing, how many more celebrities do you think we're gonna lose in the next in the next year? Do you have any like any bets on who's next? Because I mean, I keep, we've I lost Betty saying, White, we've I, lost I, the Queen. I 
keep saying like people like we've lost so many celebrities, but now I'm starting to think like, did we lose that many celebrities or were we always just losing this many celebrities all the time? And like know, in a world dude. of hyper information, it's become more apparent. But were we not always no, I, just losing? No, dude, I think the last time we had a spate like this was in the 90s. We really? had, um, yes, yeah, you had, um, you had the basis of Metallica trying to catch a tour bus, which didn't yeah. end well for him, uh, yeah. FYI. Uh, you had uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan that decided to put his chopper into a mountain. Um, you had a, in the 90s, you had a, just like this two, three year span where just a shitload of people kicked the bucket and, and famous people. But I mean, we, yeah, the last two years have been, you know, all the, all the old timers have kicked out. I mean, Betty White, the Queen. But but yeah um uh what's his name um of Aerosmith who who else did we lose like Betty White and the Queen it's like the Queen of America the Queen Queen of England and like America's grandma yeah well dude if you if judging on the last couple of years um she was your queen as well just just saying Betty (laughs) Betty White was America's grandma man oh dude Betty White was America's grandma. Yeah, Betty was White was absolutely friend. awesome. Uh, she was America's grandma. Um, a brilliant character. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, we won't talk about all the all the soccer players that um, got uh, cardiac issues uh, on the practice field or on the pitch. Uh, we'll we'll leave that. <laughs> is that still is that meme still a thing? Like uh. Oh yeah, they still they still dropping. On a much higher rate than uh, that's the batting that the batting average is. Hmm. But uh, yeah, on the, on a different point, dude, how did uh, your um, university's football season go? Because that that should be concluded now. State champions, that's how it went. Oh, state and, and champions and number thirteen, Flor- the Florida State University, state champions, top ranked. Oh yes, uh, and the tri-state area. To, to like we're basically what are we like second in the, in our conference and like st- ah. second or third in our conference and th- number 13th ranked nationally finally going to a bowl game in actually a- two days playing in Orlando in one of the bowl games so yeah, um, yeah well the yes, best part 13th- is that UCF I found out that UCF has a furry club so that just oh makes seriously. Me- they have a furry club. Oh, the University of Central. I just want to point out the University of Central Florida has an official furry club. Fuck. Fuck Help. UCF. Go Knowles. Fuck the University. Dude, of, we we also beat of, the University of Miami by a record margin. I'm talking like 50 did you, points type margin. Hmm? Speaking of furries, did you check that? I think it was in Ohio. I, th- I think it w- I stand under correction, but I think it was in uh, Ohio. You just have to say it was in Ohio. I already believe it. Like nothing okay, good happens in Ohio. This 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 couple dressed up in, in 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 Bigfoot suits, okay, and they went out to have coitus in the in the woods, and apparently pretty vocally so, okay. And this mm-hmm. father and son thought it was bears, and shot both of them. Average day in Ohio. Average day in Ohio. <laughs> Completely average day in Ohio. Dude, that was the funniest shit Worst. ever. The only, like, <laughs> literally the only good thing about Ohio is that it produced Dave Ch- Chappelle. And oh, dude. In fact, he wasn't even born in Ohio. He just lives there. Yeah, and, he just lives there. Yeah. And dude, I, I guess have... born. that's it. There's nothing I, good about Ohio. Okay. Corn, corn is a is a is a big redeeming factor. Not just because one also, of the one, the Ohio State quote unquote got absolutely fucking bodied by Michigan in in football, yeah, and that's dude, like one of the biggest college football rivalries ever. Aside from universe, Florida, the Florida State versus you know the University okay, of Florida but, in but, Gainesville, but which Odin, we beat. We beat in, every in, single in team. Ohio's. In Ohio's defense, you've got more meth heads per square kilometer than Ohio has people per square kilometer. That's okay. True. That's true. So just just don't uh, be too harsh on them. It's they, it's not um, their fault. That's 
Literally, but, Florida um, State is undefeated in 48 out of 50 states. The only teams oh, we lost to are from are from North and South Carolina. So fuck ooh, North and South Carolina. Actually, you know what? South Carolina is kind of cool. Carolina. <laughs> South Carolina's got Nancy Mace, and she she's kind of bad. Like I would. Yes, but dude, thir- 13th nationally is is really not bad, dude. If you're thinking there's 50 considering fucking we states to compete un- com- Considering we were completely unranked last year. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, I would I would guess the average amount of, of um, university football teams per state is about three. Yeah. Per state. To, to rank 13th out of I mean, it's 50 states times three, 150 fucking teams to rank 13th is, is not bad at all. It's It's really good. Yeah, yeah, this is it's I mean, solid, solid performance. Performance could have gone to the playoffs if we had just not lost to like Wake Forest or or uh, North Did Carolina. Did you guys lose? Did you guys lose to Wake Forest? Yeah, that's North Carolina. Oh, Wake Forest, NC State, and and um, Clemson, which is South but, Carolina. Okay. But yeah, the, those Carolina but Clemson boys Clemson is like are, are ranked number markets. three, so, so it's not bad to lose to Clemson yeah. of all teams. And they recently won a national championship. Like it's kind of expected you'll lose to Clemson. The other two mm. were a toss up. Yeah, it was a, it was an even Steven match. But like Clemson is like yeah, I'm kidding. yeah, it's fine losing. It would be like if I went up and and lost a fight to like Mike Tyson or something. It's like yeah, dude, it's Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I don't want to be funny, but I think even at his age, Mike Tyson will beat the ever-loving crap out of me now. That, yeah, that like I, 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 I hate when Oaks like, oh, I can take Mike Tyson now. Oh uh, no, you can't. Awesome prime. No, you fucking can't, bro. Can't. No, that guy's can't. built like a brick outhouse, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's got no more feeling left in his face. There's nothing uh, you can do to that boy to hurt him. Absolutely fucking nothing. Yeah. Uh, Mike Tyson will lay out anyone, even today. Mm. It was like the other day I had a, had a chat with a guy, and he was like ragging on Colin McGregor. I'm like, dude, Colin McGregor, you can give him a bottle of fucking whiskey to finish and a case of BS, and he will still kick your ass from here until the judgment day. There's no way you with your flabby ass can take on someone like Colin McGregor or Mike Tyson or anything like that. They will beat your ass solidly. Mm. Too many armchair experts these days getting too full of themselves. <laughs> yeah. But um, you mentioned J- Dave Chappelle. Did you watch his, his latest special? Which one? Uh, the, the, he has this one scene where, where he goes to buy a gun because this is one guy that's trespassing on his property. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. Yes, that was fucking absolutely hilarious. Now, I must say, I've got a... a a much deeper appreciation for J- Dave Chappelle of later. Yes, his stuff is exceedingly funny. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, he's always been pretty good. Like, I, I, yeah. I re-watched the Chappelle show on Netflix. I'm like, damn, he's always been pretty good. It's just, yeah. again, because, you know, the cultural milieu has shifted so suddenly, yeah. like, um, you know, it seems like he's doing more, like, conservative comedy as you call it but it's really not mm. it's just yeah like he hasn't shifted his position on most things like if you ask him he's still like pro things like abortion and all that like he hasn't shifted yeah. his position at all no the the the, the overton window has shifted yeah significantly like he's barely shifted his not okay i won't say not at all but he hasn't like no he's still Dave Chappelle. like if you go back yeah. in his old money like he still has Many of the same, similar, or at least very extremely close to, you know, his his social positions like ten years ago, fifteen years mm. ago. Like, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah, he's I mean, he's basically what, in my opinion, is a is a relative centrist. He's not yeah. he's not overtly liberal and left leaning, but he's also not extreme right leaning. It's it's that in the middle, we just you know live and let live type vibe. Yeah, but no, but that bit about the fucking where he goes to buy a gun, dude. Uh, fucking uh, guys, I piss myself laughing every time. Like, <laughs> I piss myself laughing, yeah, every Where's fucking your dick time. Out? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like okay, I, yeah, for the the um, we've got in Afrikaans the one Afrikaans comedian Casper de Fees. 
You see, that yeah. guy also has a couple of skits that every fucking time I piss myself laughing. That is just fucking hilarious. Great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, but but dude, when are, when are you gonna go watch a monster monster ja- monster truck race, monster jam race, I don't monster know. jam events? When I've, when Come I've on, tried. dude. I had dude, a driver's. I, I actually recently got a, an American driver's license, so I guess I'll get it. I don't know why. On, I, like I dude. feel like I I I I'm not qualified to 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 watch a monster truck race on on the basis that I have no desire to fuck my cousin. So yeah, like, but I didn't, I didn't, I, didn't, I cannot <laughs> a fucking afford this monster. Monster Jam is coming to South Africa. I get now from every country music show ever, just because like you are just cousin fucking. Um, <laughs> you are you are going to be alone in your Speed fucking run for ostracizing ever. myself ever. <laughs> yeah, but off. seriously, I mean, because because Monster Jam is coming to to SA. Okay, they're doing a sh- uh, they're doing a show in Joe. We're going to show in Cape Town, but it's like nearly a grand for fucking ticket which is and then it's like shitty she- seats is a is a k for ticket which is far fucking above my fucking fireplace so you might you have to go watch one and just report back to me so that i can vicariously oh, experience it well, no I'll, but seriously I'll do like even, a shit ton of snuff drink a shit ton of whiskey and like look at pictures yeah. of my cousin to get in the mood and just... <laughs> no dude <laughs> Uh, I, everybody I, I in the gonna... state hates me now. Like I've just ripped out <laughs> everything. Taylor Swift, Monster what are you gonna trucks, do next? country are you... music, fucking your cousin. Like, what are you gonna like do everything. next? Are you gonna buy a Prius? Because uh, that's the that's the direction this is going to. I'm already wearing a turtleneck while we're recording oh, this, like a black turtleneck. Come on, dude. Like a black Steve Jobs style t- turtleneck. I'm literally Fuck wearing under. Um, fuck Steve. I'll, I'll put, I'll post. No, well, fuck Steve Jobs, and I'll post a picture there. But yeah, wearing a turtleneck. You, um, I don't know if you've checked on. I don't know how much you're on TikTok. Have you checked that? Uh, um, I'm not a, on TikTok a, at all. Ah, oh, dude, this is one. Okay, he's a local comedian, black guy. Um, I watch TikToks t- on on Instagram a week later, oh. like an adult. <laughs> like, an, like a responsible adult. But he does this little. He, he does a lot of. Um, like social political social economic commentary like little short tiktok videos and then at the end of everyone it's like fuck michael owen dude and then michael owen was in south africa for some other fucking reason i don't know why and then the some one of the other comedians like actually did a video with michael owen we showed him a video of this guy telling him oh, fuck michael owen at the end dude yes that was hilarious i don't know if you saw saw that no oh but- dude i'll i'll I'll, when I when I come across it again, I'll send some on to you. But it's fucking hilarious. Michael Owen saying like, "What did I do?" <laughs> I don't know. Bro. <laughs> but no but one yeah. likes Michael Owen. Eh, eh, I'm ambivalent. Exactly. So you don't like him. No. Ambivalent is, is 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 the same. No. We'll we'll take that win. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, anything else? Uh, anything else you want to? No, I discuss? think we, this this is like. Long enough, like we'll probably record more, but I think this is this is a good place to leave it off for now. Yeah. Um. Other than yeah, like like I said, I think coffee's. Uh, I think uh, Lex Friedman, who's like one of my heroes, did a pretty good like interview with uh, Coffee's on the whole FTX Sam Bankman Fried thing. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, analysis. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kanye is Kanye. He he was always going to be fucking crazy, throw shit at the wall. Um, I don't care if I never get to date another white woman again. Taylor Swift is still trash. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, most important question, um, that the poll that Elon ran on whether you should resign as CEO, how did you vote? I didn't even vote in that poll. But oh, like, dude. Come on. Where's your participation spirit? I just... Uh, Democracy just like, only works if everyone participates. I just, like, oh, wow. <laughs> Elon Musk, you this thing. Uh, Honestly, though, generally, I think it is generally better if if he if he keeps his hands off, but like still has enough power to ensure some form of mm. transparency, because he's not the guy that should be running. Like he should own it and uh, own and have uh, enough sway to keep it to keep yes. Twitter quote unquote honest. But I don't think him being directly involved is a good thing. Like that's he like yeah, but, uh, if you look at the changes he's made where he's skidded off this way and that way and features were added and then taken off and all this shit and I was like it's so chaotic. It's like nah dude, I don't think you're the thought, guy. 
But on uh, the one oh, hand, and shout out to everyone who still has no blue tick on their name. Like fuck yeah, eight dollars on Twitter. <laughs> but dude, I, that that's only because I can't afford it. Okay, so that, so don't don't go too hard on that. <laughs> it's legitimately eight dollars, and I'm just like, <laughs> I, I just like. Uh, just like not buying it out of being fucking petty, like. But I think that's the, like. But but that's the thing I like about, like. Yes, I do agree. At, at Elon should more step into the background and and get someone that can actually run the show, run Twitter. But I think for the time being, I quite like the way he's doing things with the new features and and getting all this shit sorted out. Because instead of taking two years to fucking get the guys to develop it and and beta testing and all of that write the shit put the feature on see if it works in real life or not because like you you also know you can you can test a a, a piece of and a feature or something on an app as thoroughly as you fucking can the second you put it out into the real world you're going to have issues because you can never anticipate every which way in which is going to be used you just can't. There's too many variables. So that's a that's a it's a well I think it's a quick way to get the new features sorted out. See what features work, what features don't work, and um, keep the good, chuck the bad. But with the blue tick, I actually I don't know. I quite like the fact that he that he said okay now eight dollars for the blue tick because the people that want to buy it for a joke gets the kick out of the joke and then they they move on from that probably. And the people yeah. that don't want to buy it don't buy it, and they just go use on using Twitter as usual. So I don't know. I quite yeah. I hope he does step away from being so directly involved in let's say the next six to eight months. But I kind of hope he sticks around for another couple of months and just gets gets because get, it it adds a nice space to it because Twitter has had more features um sorted out in the last six months than it had in the last three four years prior to to Musk taking over but but it's because he takes a direct approach write it put it on see if it works it doesn't work take it off the board yeah. next I thing mean, he's, like it doesn't surprise you he's an engineer at the end mm. of the day that uh, like um and that's just how engineers work to problem solve they're very like pragmatic like that so yeah. Yeah, so uh, I quite they, I quite like that approach, and I like the the absolute meltdown half of Twitter has because Elon is he Musk, an engineer? Is he? A, I, I don't know. Uh, dude. I think he's. You just, know, he actually he, went to Watercliff. Yeah, he went he's to Boys Watercliff. High. Like everything, it's like try to go to every school that everyone in Pretoria hated. Yeah, hates. Like, like I'm surprised uh, it's not in his bio. I <laughs> I try to go to every school as like yeah. He, he literally he, he, he only had to go to office. Then he had the trifecta for yeah, the hated high schools in Pretoria. <laughs> dude, yeah. Uh, what is, is he actually? Uh, in Bash of Arts. Okay, so yeah, he's uh, physics. Yeah, Bash of Arts and physics. So yes, he's a physicist. Yeah, okay. but yeah, uh, but I must say I quite like his sort of chaotic, um, like aim and pray approach that he has to build it's it's i will say though i will still caution people like like the the whole elon's one of us like hype like oh no no guys no 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 no, no. he post shit posted some memes like he's not one and this isn't just me and my burning (laughs) well-known long rivalry burning hatred of musk that's not what you don't like musk eh? (laughs) <laughs> beyond that this is just me saying like there is such a thing as controlled opposition guys like mm. he's, he's not one of us just because he shit posted some memes like well, like no no sorry yeah but but it's it's and, and a bunch of other people have pointed out like musk and your jordan petersons and your sam harris's and all those kind of guys it's yeah. it's they're still left-leaning and they still they'll still fuck you over if you give them the chance they're just less extreme than the current narrative. It's yeah. they they're still a threat. They they're not your friend. They they're just gonna wait for you to turn your back and then they're yeah, gonna shout write. out shout out to Conscious Caracal and his classic phrase, I'm not your friend. It's the yeah. same thing with like internet like like YouTubers and 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 like all that. None of us are your friends, guys. Like mm. like like 
Yeah, Martin's my friend, but like Yorks listening to this show, like none of you are my friend unless I speak to you offline and, and like, <laughs> genuinely have conversation. Uh, and this is just me making a statement against like the weird fucking parasocial relationships that people yeah. tend to form. Like go outside and touch some bloody grass. None of us are your friends. Oh, we dude, appreciate the viewership, on, but none of us are your friend. On you see that a lot on Twitter, dude. Like people get lank upset. Because they have this Twitter friendship and now this person turned around and stabbed me in the back. I'm like, dude, it's a rando on a social media platform. Really? You're going to call him a friend? Uh, it's You don't know this person. You've never met him. You have no idea what, what his intentions are. You've never seen him in real life. You've never spoken to him in real life. I mean, it's just, it's a it's an avatar on a social media platform. Yeah. Up until the point where you actually meet the person and spend some legitimate face-to-face -face time with them, it's just an avatar yeah. on a computer. That's all it is. Yeah. And you get some people that, that can put on a, a character for the social media oh, personality yeah. that they create. Like, seriously. Well, we both we we've both have mutual I experience know that. with that. Very, yeah, we I've learned that very well over the last few years. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, one of the upsides of me is that, like, people have met me offline. It's like, yeah, I actually am like this in person. Yeah, like, I, just, yeah I can like, I can vouch for that. Odin is Odin. <laughs> yeah, like, I actually am like this in person. It's not, like, some facade. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but, but speaking of conscious character, we should get a hold of him for the next one. I will. I will. For part just two. stop hiding away in his, his, his garden. He's, in he's having a relaxing holiday for, like, at the coast yes. or something. So... What what is a holiday? Can you eat that, dude? Because <laughs> the problem is the the work that I do, the people go on holiday and then they want the work done while they're on holiday so they don't lose money, which means I don't get on holiday. I'm just fucking working the whole time. So I'm 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 a bit envious of the people that can just chill out and have a nice festive season, but I I, I try and control it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It'll be worth it for you in the end. <laughs> or so they say yeah so i think we'll, yeah. we'll do part yeah. two soon but uh yeah, yeah. i had to go out and run some errands it's like 2 30 here and the sun's actually out and it's like not it's not mid freeze warning so yeah it's a nice yeah. it's a nice uh warm uh 14 degrees and that's celsius not Fahrenheit. I refuse to use your stupid fucking horse measurements. I call it horse yes, measurements dude. because they develop Fahrenheit off the body, body heat of a horse, which even the creators of Fahrenheit admitted was fucking stupid. So, stupid. But okay, yeah. just just the, just a slight tangent to show you how hard assed Americans are about using their freedom units. Okay, they <laughs> develop the me fucking NASA they uses metric. Your military well, you, uses metric. It's yeah, just the civilians. That, that, NASA only uses metric after they crashed the space shuttle because there was a, a little bit of a, a miscommunication between um, metric and imperial. But America went and designed a whole measurement system for tools. Okay, so it's it's sort of it's sort of like imperial, but not they use different um, sizing than imperial. But you know how they got to the sizes that they used. They use um, metrics. So, so, so when you said, okay, you've got a 13 millimeter spanner. Okay. Yeah. So now we're going to go and figure out how many fractions of an inch do we need to use to get to 13 millimeters. And then that's going to be our size spanner. So it's, it's the same size as the, well, more or less the same size as the metric, but it's not metric. It's, it's our SIE, our own freedom units that we're going to use. Americans, please just, just take the metric system. It's not that bad. You you you'll still wake up tomorrow. The the sky won't fall. You won't die. The funny part It'll is that fine. they use metric in ammunition. Like they know what nine millimeter mm. rounds are. Like oh, but 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 yet they still stick to calibers. And uh, the, it's the weirdest thing. You'll get someone from the military and they say, "Oh, I'm driving five. My 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 friend stays five miles from me, but he walked two clicks on a rock march." Yeah. The uh, second uh, they speak military it's terms, cog it's uh, called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive right? Dissonance. Yeah. No, Americans, please, just it won't bite you. It's not nothing. It's not as scary as you make it out to be. Just let the freedom units go. Um, your 
you're a product of the, of the new world order in any case. So just join the rest of us. It's nice here. <laughs> yeah. And with that cheery note. <laughs> yeah. Let's knock out for the night, dude. It's uh, mm-hmm. half past nine. I need to go hit the bed like an old guy. Sweet, bro. <laughs> I will catch you tomorrow. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Cool. Have, have fun. Good one. Cheers. Cheers.